Sony vs Microsoft, PS4 vs Xbox One, and Uncharted vs Halo. It's the console wars, guys, and I'm joined by HMK, McIntyre Productions, Game Over Jesse, and Zeltic for the final part of this E3 special discussion. Let's begin with a great child of mine, Uncharted. This game series is probably one of the best things, and the most important reasons to own a PS4 at the moment, especially with the upcoming uh, Nathan Drake collection uh, or Uncharted collection. The thing about Uncharted, what makes this series great, is how it is a fusion of Indiana Jones in terms of story, a setting, and gameplay, but in terms of the character, Nathan Drake, it's a fusion of uh, the Indiana Jones himself, Harrison Ford, and the jackass, Johnny Knoxville. So there's a lot of things to love with, uh, with Uncharted. The fourth installment, A Thief's End, which is believed to also be the final installment in the series, is uh, said to be open world. Uh, it is said to be the largest Uncharted game to this point. We see them implementing a lot of new techniques, such as facial animations, movements, and having an engaging and uh, involving story versus gameplay experience. And having an open world experience in Uncharted will be a completely new addition to the game. We see a lot of uh, game series going uh, open world and then seamless open world, so, such as The Witcher, such as uh, Metal Gear. And uh, it's an interesting development. And I think it's a, a fitting conclusion to the series that is in many ways a flagship for the PlayStation and especially the seventh generation of uh, gaming on the PS3. I think we are going to see a lot of, of Uncharted 4 at uh, E3 because, I mean, we already got the, um, not too long ago actually, we got the official box art of the game. And, you know, Naughty Dog, they're not one to beat around the bush when it comes to development of games, you know, with The Last of Us and all that other stuff. They want Un Uncharted 4. People want to have Uncharted 4. So I don't think they're really going to, you know, play with our emotions like that. So uh, there's going to be a big blow of Uncharted 4 this year. That's one of Sony's big, big guns. They have to, you know, capitalize on the hype that Naughty Dog is creating creating with uh, developing games for PlayStation 4, especially with that that huge, huge, huge blowout with uh, The Last of Us. So they just need to keep that hype going. Yeah, one of the games that I'm looking forward to coming, uh, I think just yesterday they revealed the Uncharted trilogy coming. I think we'll actually be seeing gameplay and more focused on that in Uncharted 4 at the press conference. Uncharted 4, which is coming out in the first quarter of 2016, it's great that the game is actually coming out and not being postponed to, let's say, a fall release next uh, next year. It shows that they are still committed to compete with Halo 5 Guardians. Other titles beside Uncharted might be appearing at uh, Sony's uh, press conference is the reboot of uh, Ratchet and Clank that just recently got a new trailer and even some gameplay footage shown which you can see on the screen right now. So guys, what do you think about the new uh, Ratchet and Clank game coming out in this, uh, the spring of uh, 2016? It is looking like a return to the roots of the series after all. Yeah, I think it'll be sort of competing with ukulele as uh, they're both sort of 3D style platformers and I think it'll be nice to see uh, which one actually does better as one is a Sony exclusive that everyone already knows and the other is a kickstarted uh, recreation of Benjo and Kazooie and it'll be interested to see how a AAA funded game straight from the first party will do up against a game that's being uh, crowdsourced. One of the games that is, some speculate could make a return, The Last Guardian. We haven't yes. heard anything about the game in four or five years, is it? Yeah. And the question is, when Sony does not have that much to pull out, uh, or a big gun to pull out apart from Uncharted, of course, could we see the return of The Last Guardian? <laughs> no. No, um, a lot of people was like, oh yeah, that game's cancelled. I don't believe it's cancelled, but I mean, you know, I don't know the story behind The Last Guardian. The Last Guardian is such a funny story. They've been developing this thing for forever. They have not been giving us a lot of information. I Possibly they could, you know, bring the Prodigal Son back and, you know, blow out with The Last Guardian. And it was like, hey guys, the game is actually coming out. And that would be cool, but I think the hype, I think people's hype for that game is basically dead. But I mean, there's always hope, quote unquote, so... Yeah, I'm glad that. No. Yeah, I remember to sort of hold people over for the release of The Last Guardian. The developers released a collection of uh, Shadows of the Colossus and Ika, 
I think was the name of the other game, and it was sort of an HD collection of the PS2 games. Do you think we could be seeing another collection or the same collection re-released for PlayStation 4, but just up even higher, given a little bit more detail instead of 60 frames? That would be cool, but didn't they say they're going to stay away from me, uh, that Sony wanted to stay away from creating remasters and remakes for a while or something? I'm not sure. Yeah, that could have been someone else. I don't know. Yeah, they have quite a lot of them in the last couple of years, especially with the remastered uh, Last of Us games and some other some other titles. For they might port some games to the PS4 from the PS3, but we will have to see. So PlayStation 4 and Sony, basically lots of Uncharted, quite a lot of Ratchet and Clank since it's a reboot of the series. Perhaps the surprise announcement, a new God of War game, and then we have No Man's Sky, The Last Guardian, if it's not in development hell, and that is basically Sony at the moment. Uh, I was going to say that's uh, pretty much all I see coming from them. I think there'll be a huge focus on uh, third-party games and other smaller indie games kind of filling in the gap between their AAA titles. Uh, to the competitor Microsoft and uh, the big show gun there will be of course Halo 5 Guardians. But we also have, have quite some big plans this year in terms of uh, exclusives. So what are your thoughts about Microsoft's uh, plan? It looks like the Xbox One is making a comeback after the horrendous debut uh, at E3 in 2013. We will uh, see definitely a lot of Halo 5 Guardians and we will definitely see some demos. So you might be able to play some some of it uh, if you will be willing to stand the queen in that uh, in that line HMK. You know, I, 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 I'm not sure if I can you know get if I can you know pass that line or if I can get like early in that line maybe but I'm not willing to stand that whole line just for Halo 5. People are speculating that this will be the final installment with uh, Master Chief. We know it's a different type of game than the Halo trilogy which was concluded and I think they will put a lot of emphasis on uh, in terms of the story since we don't lo- know that much about the story yet of the game. We got we got a title so it's more than Zelda Wii U of course. We got some trailers, we got the multiplayer, chase of the multiplayer in the Master Chief collection. So I think they will put a lot of emphasis on the story and campaign in, uh, in this uh, installment of Halo since we know that uh, Bungie is no longer working on the Halo games and uh, it will be interesting how the series will keep up in Halo 5 Guardians but apart from it could we see some surprise announcements from Microsoft this year? They do have some sort of surprise announcement I can't think of any I know uh, rumors were spreading a while back because leaked images or a leaked video appeared of uh, I believe it was the first Gears of War game, and then they should be working on another installment in that franchise. Uh, yeah, I think Gears of War is probably what we could expect. And the dream would be, of course, uh, Rebirth of uh, Banjo-Kazooie or bringing back some other oh, Red. Yeah, that, that's right. Rare uh, announced that they were going to be bringing something that was, quote, uniquely rare to the show floor but then again uniquely rare that could be just uh, a toads. marketing term for the next connect game it, or, or battle toads <laughs> exactly it they took one of the best development teams that worked on donkey kong country benjo kazooie and a ton of other games and just ruined them by making them make the thing is with Rare, and not a lot of people that were Rare at the beginning of when uh, Rare was bought by Microsoft are still at Rare. A lot of them just quit the team altogether. In fact, most of the, I think, if not all of the, the staff over at Rare are not part of the original Rare staff. Of, of course, Microsoft still owns many of the IPs, including, let's say, Perfect Dark um, and Banjo-Kazooie and, uh, I believe, Conkers. Um, like, really, I'm not with, like, uh, Banjo-Kazooie is being alluded to be revived by Phil Spencer. And um, same thing goes with Battletoads. I'm not particularly sure how well that would do, considering that Microsoft and Sony uh, are more towards the, let's say, the more mature titles of, let's say, Battlefield or Call of Duty or Uncharted or things of that sort. More of like a cinematic, mature kind of rating that uh, pretty much us Westerners are pretty much all accustomed to. It's a different market, let's say, in Japan uh, or let's say in Eastern markets as well. But there are uh, certain um, audiences in the West that also are keen to that. In a sense, what's going to happen with Rare in the future, really, uh, Phil Spencer definitely has a plan for that. 
but in a sense that rare be rare becoming it's uh, reclaiming its th uh, throne as a very uh triple a developer like they were in the n64 game uh, days i don't necessarily see that happening since most of the staff at rare that made rare what it was uh are not a part of the rare we see today what do you think hmk could we see a return of rare at this e3 X, maybe as like some sort of cop out because of the whole ukulele thing that's going on. If they decide to make a Banjo Kazooie game in in spite, uh, at the same time, if it's anything anything other than Banjo Kazooie or maybe Conquer, I I couldn't care less. Battle Toads. Yeah, <laughs> uh, not, not even for Battle Toads. Man. It's yeah, they they appeared in uh, in uh, Shovel Knight for the Xbox One, but uh, we will have to see. Okay, Microsoft is a large question mark. We don't know what they have in store for us. We know there will be a lot of Halo, probably some a large big announcement. Perhaps Gears of War, we'll have to see. There's, it's been a while since we had the last Gears of War game. Uh, dream of all of us would be, of course, uh, Return of Rare with one of the great IPs. After the uh, embarrassment with Conquer and Project Spark last year, we shouldn't keep get our hopes up, but we'll have to see. Yeah, since we know that uh, Microsoft and um, also Sony are experimenting a lot uh, in what they, what they want to do in the next couple of years, both are trying to go into the uh, waters where Nintendo burned their asses off once uh, <laughs> virtual, virtual reality, uh, the virtual boy, uh, boy jokes will, will never end. It will never end. Right. Um, so the question is, uh, we know that uh, Sony is developing their own uh, virtual a reality, um, oh, what is it called again? Virtual Project reality. Morpheus. Yeah, Project Morpheus. And Microsoft have partnered with Oculus, which was uh, bought out by Facebook uh, last year. So is this uh, a new revolution in gaming or just another gimmick that will uh, fade away in a matter of years? Well, I definitely don't want to compare it too much towards the Virtual Boy because the thing about the Virtual Boy is that it was a weird piece of technology that Nintendo didn't really market it so much and had a very, very low uh, library base. What's different with the Oculus and Morpheus is that we've seen the rise of content creation, um, particularly on YouTube, that we see people like, let's say, Markiplier, PewDiePie, etc. Uh, really showcasing these games and, and really giving these let's plays that gives these games infinitely much more popularity than they wouldn't have otherwise. Um, that's what happened with like, uh, for example, Five Nights at Freddy's or Minecraft. Um, the Project Morpheus and Oculus Rift is getting a lot of noise already, not through conventional means, but through means uh, via the internet, uh, via content creation, which is giving it a lot more popularity than it wouldn't have otherwise. And that, in a sense, kind of pleases stockholders, I believe, in a sense that it gives it much more feasibility than, let's say, the Virtual Boy, since the Virtual Boy had very, very weird, um, let's say, mechanics to go along with it. But with Oculus and Morpheus, they're a lot more savvy. But in terms of what you said it is a, a gimmick, uh, I'm inclined to say yes, but it's also a possibility that they can uh, further develop it. Right now, they're experiencing a VR race between um, Microsoft and Sony. But I'm, I'm not particularly sure where it's going to be heading or whether or not it's going to be profitable for those particular, com uh, uh, those particular companies. And so I, I am curious to see what's going to happen to the VR system in the years to come. Alright guys, this basically concludes the E3 special discussion on the seven press conferences. Thank you so much for watching the special and uh, I also want to give a shout out to all of my guests, HFK, McIntyre Productions, Game Over Jesse and Zeldic. I also recommend you check out their channels and uh, if you want, subscribe to them as well. Otherwise, I wish all of you a great E3 and uh, hope you will enjoy the show that is coming. Uh, the first press conference of Bethesda uh, aired uh, in the middle of the night when I was editing this uh, final episode and you might see some updates coming from this channel if something special will be announced either at the Nintendo, uh, PlayStation or Microsoft conferences. So uh, until then uh, this was the Commonwealth Realm and I also highly recommend you if you haven't already seen the Bethesda conferences that was the benchmark uh, that is uh, and the standard that the other guys will have to strive after. So until then this was the Commonwealth Realm and I will see you guys soon.